Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today we're talking about spinal stability and spinal surgery, and our goals are to explain the differences between hypomobility and hypermobility. Now, hypomobility is that set of problems where one or more vertebra are moving too little, and hypermobility is where one or more vertebra are moving too much. Now, we look at the vertebra as, as this, this unit of one on top of another. So because of gravity, we look at one vertebra on top of another, or the last vertebra L5 on top of the sacrum, we look at these as, as vertebral motion units. So we look at them as one at a time. But you also have to realize that in the living human, there's so much going on that there's all these different vertebrae up and down the spine. You can't just look at one vertebral motion unit, you have to look at the idea of the entire spine working together. But the concept can be explained very easily, which is to say that there are very small ligaments and very large ligaments. There are very small muscles and very large muscles. And these are things that connect the vertebra to each other and they stabilize and hold the vertebra in place over each other so that they don't slide or translate forward and back. This is the front. That's the front now. And so you're looking at the left side of a, of a vertebra. So they slide forward too much sometimes and they can slide sideways too, too much and that's called translational lesions or, or damage. And they're not supposed to. They're supposed to be held in place. And usually the ligaments hold them in place reasonably so that if you were holding a spine at the bottom, and, and all its ligaments were intact and you wiggled it, it would move some, but the vertebra wouldn't undergo any translation forward or back or side to side. It might flex and extend, which is fairly normal, but not too much. And so the ligaments are the foundational thing that stabilizes the spine, but, it, but the ligaments don't do all of the stabilization of the spine. The muscles also do some stabilization. So if a person has a problem with their spine where they've been diagnosed with a hypomobility, that means their chiropractor or their orthopedic surgeon has decided that they've got a lack of motion of some vertebra, they usually get a physical therapy, a chiropractic adjustment, or some kind of method to make those vertebra move more again. And we can see that on special x-rays, we can see it on special movement um, x-rays where the person's moving or sitting still, or in a position where they bend all the way forward and we take a picture of them. All of those can be measured and, and adjusted. What I'm really talking about today is not so much the hypomobilities as the hypermobilities. That means the, the excessive motion. So if a person has excessive motion of a vertebra that's out of position on a static film, standing or sitting still, there's probably ligament damage. And you need to talk to your doctor and your radiologist about that because your chiropractor, your medical doctor, your orthopedic surgeon, your spinal surgeon, your, your neurosurgeon, they can all help you discuss this option of whether you actually have ligament damage or not based on static films and dynamic bending films. If you do discover that, that through some range of motion or at rest, you've got what qualifies as ligament damage, then there may be necessary therapies, things like prolotherapy, where they inject, they inject basically sugar water with tiny needles into the, into the areas of ligaments and try to induce inflammation. They try to cause a little bit of irritation, which causes repair molecules and repair cells to come to the site and, and solidify it, to make it grow stronger and to make it deposit more collagen. And that collagen strengthens those ligaments so that, that there isn't so much slop. Now, modern days, they're also using laser therapies. Laser therapies, therapeutic lasers, class 3 lasers, can penetrate a, a many inches into the, into the tissue safely, and they're not cutting lasers. They're not lasers that are designed to cut like a dentist or a surgeon might use. They're healing lasers. They're called cold lasers, and they're used to help heal those ligaments by shining a light on there. And you might ask, well, how does that light work? Well, the light stimulates mitochondria and stimulates cells to heal and stimulates cells to go to work and to make new tissue. So that's what happens with the red light therapies and, and other, other colored lights. But it's red and violet spectrum usually, those, those frequencies of light that are used repeatedly. And, and the sessions take repeated application of laser. And it, it doesn't hurt. It feels wonderful. And it's usually just a, a couple of minutes at a time. It can be done several times a week or it can be done every day. It can be done at home. It can be done with home units. It can be done with doctor units. Certainly doctors have better lasers than you can buy at home. But, but there's lots of options for a person to get better. But most interesting for me is that after you've dealt with the actual ligament damage and you're onto the muscle problems, which is how, do, how does the spine stay together muscularly? Ideally, if the ligaments are in shape and the muscles are not holding things together, what happens clinically is the patient feels pain and they present to the doctor with stiffness, which is weird. 
You might be confused by this thinking, man, how does this person show up at the doctor's stiff? Well, the reason for that is if these vertebra are loose and not working very well, they've got hypermobilities, either from ligament damage or from lack of muscular coherence and, and muscle tension, proper muscle tension, normal muscle tension, then when they do actions, certain actions, they might feel all kinds of pain because the vertebra move too much or they're not stable. They don't have a good instantaneous axis of rotation, we call it. And so when that happens, the person's small muscles are not firing well and they're not coordinated by the cerebellum, which is a part of the brain that coordinates all of this unconsciously. We don't do this consciously. In fact, I, you can't make one vertebra move relative to the other without all the other vertebra moving. We can't do that consciously. When I turn my body, I can't make one vertebra move independently of the other because we're not wired that way. Our cerebellum does that instantaneous control of individual vertebra and, and blocks of vertebra and how they work together. That's called coupled motion in the spine. So if you've got a spinal instability, you're going to show up at your doctor's office and you're going to be told that you're stiff because your doctor's going to look at the global spinal muscles and find that those muscles are tight because they're compensating for the wishy-washy, sloppy local muscles that are not stabilizing the spine. So you're going to have crepitus and noise, joint noise. You're going to hear cracking and popping in your neck all the time or your spine. You're going to have feelings that your spine isn't stable, that it's slipping around all the time, and yet your back muscles are tight. So your doctor might prescribe baclofen, which is a muscle relaxer or, or other muscle relaxers that are designed to help people that have much worse diseases of stiffness from, from upper motor neuron lesions that make them very, very stiff. You, you might get all kinds of medications that are designed to loosen up your muscles because it looks like your muscles are too tight. And yeah, sure they are, but they're the superficial large muscles. It's not the, the little refined muscles that are inside your spine that connect these transverse processes to each other and the spinous processes to each other and all the different links that go in there, the muscles called multifidi and all the different names of these muscles that we'll get into later. So if your cerebellum and spinal cord can't control those tiny little muscles, you're not going to have spinal stability and loosening you up and stretching you and, and making you more limber and sending you to yoga and doing all these things by itself if the goal is to make you more flexible, will make you worse because your problem is primarily, if, if it is, a hypermobility. So we want to do things that stabilize. So we want to do things that involve balance challenges. We want to involve perturbational, unstable surfaces like a piece of foam or a mini trampoline or some unstable surface like a wobble board. We want to have guided progressive exercises that get you stronger and that don't go too rapidly because you're unstable to begin with. We want to make sure you don't fall. We also want to make sure before you get a spinal surgery that you have other stabilizing exercises that don't involve balance. Some of the most basic ones are the McGill and, and McKenzie exercises. Some of these things are done lying on the ground where you laying on your back and you roll up your neck very slowly with certain prescriptive exercises we'll get into later and describe exactly how they work. There are other exercises where you're on your hands and knees and you do bird dog moves and you do Superman moves and different things where you pick up one limb and you pick up another limb while you're on the floor on all fours or on maybe a, a medicine ball of some kind. So these are different exercises. These can be done with, a, with an assistant helping you. They can be done on a chair, with you leaning on a chair. And these are exercises designed to make your muscles fire better. So the end of the stabilization is what's called motor patterns. Not only do you have trouble with your, your vertebra being too loose, you might have trouble controlling them when an action occurs. For example, when you lay down and you pick up your leg, you raise your leg straight behind you when you're lying face down, there's an order of operations. These muscles are supposed to fire in order, much like pistons fire in a car if they have normal timing. So you want to make sure that you have a doctor or a physical therapist that's working with you and looking at that order of firing, that you don't have a motor pattern alteration. The European school or the, the Eastern European school or, or the Prague school used to talk about this. This is a group of neurologists and orthopedics doctors and physical therapists that starting from around the 1950s, mid-century, they began to really explore using needle EMG. They, they stuck needles throughout the entire spine and legs and, and buttocks and, and asked people to move, and they tracked when, within milliseconds, different muscles fired in, in which order. And so they were able to diagnose that people were firing in improper order because they had, they had become deconditioned and they were firing muscles improperly. So you can be taught, you can learn how to fire muscles in the right order with the right books and the right therapists, and it doesn't take a lot. So we'll get more into that in a different lecture. But today I wanted you to understand that you don't always need surgery. You don't always need chiropractic a million times, passive care a million times a week, because I'm, I'm not trying to denigrate chiropractic. I, I practice chiropractic, and I love it. I want people to understand that you don't need all passive care where somebody does something to you 
Active care may be very useful where you learn how to restore your ability to not need adjustments all the time and not be dependent on your doctor.